Hi guys. So today's video is going to be a book review of Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. All of Sanderson's adult fantasy books are connected because they are part of a shared universe called the Cosmere and the books that are talked about the most that are part of the Cosmere are Mistborn and Stormlight Archive. Warbreaker is not talked about nearly as much and I think a lot of times people get the impression that when a book isn't talked about as much it's because it's not as good as that author's other works and with Warbreaker I honestly do not think that is the case. To me I think it's just not as popular because people haven't heard about it as much. I don't think it has anything to do with the quality of the book because the book was really well done as far as the characters themselves go. I think it's some of Sanderson's best showing character growth and character development from the beginning of the book to the end of the book and then the intrigue was so well done and then in typical Sanderson fashion the magic system and the world are so cool and so unique. Jumping into the premise of the book, I actually think the back of the book does a really good job summing up what the book is about, probably better than I could. So I'm going to read to you guys each little paragraph and then kind of dive into those things in depth. So it says, Warbreaker is the story of two sisters who happen to be princesses, the god king one of them has to marry, a lesser god, and an immortal trying to undo the mistakes he made hundreds of years ago. The two sisters that are referenced are Vivenna and Ciri, and they live in a kingdom that is very, very bland, very modest, very by the books, and Vivenna, who's the oldest sister, has been groomed her whole life because of this treaty that was made with this other kingdom nearby that she's gonna have to someday marry their god king, this person that is like a god, and in that other kingdom, he's revered. Vivenna is sort of this perfect daughter because she has taken all these political obligations that are being thrown at her and done everything she can to face them head on. She's not backed away from them. She's not ever tried to do anything to rebel. She's perfect. She does everything she's supposed to as a princess and she knows that her whole life she's gonna have to marry this person and bear him a child. Her sister Siri, being the youngest, has no political obligations, so she does kind of whatever she wants. She's never been very good at listening to her tutors. She's never done a very good job of being a princess. And so she kind of has just always done what she wants. And between the two of them, Vivenna was the one that was supposed to marry the God King, but things don't necessarily happen the way they're supposed to. And suddenly the sister's roles are totally reverse. The other characters that were mentioned I think are easier to understand when you hear the next paragraph in the synopsis and that says theirs is a world in which those who die in glory return as gods to live confined to a pantheon in Halandrin's capital city, a world transformed by biochromatic magic, a power based on an essence known as breath. Using magic is arduous. Breath can only be collected one unit at a time from individual people. Okay, that paragraph alone, there's a lot of things to dissect because it's kind of like, what? But we're gonna dissect that because it's it's really good. The first part I think is kind of self-explanatory. It makes pretty good sense. People who die in glorious ways will come back and they come back as these lesser gods. And that is one of the characters that I think is one of one of the most entertaining characters in any book. And the, that character's name is Lightsong. Lightsong is told that he died in a really, really brave way, but he doesn't remember anything about his former life. He's just having to live now as this god, he's like this perfect physical specimen and he doesn't get sick, he doesn't get headaches, he can't get drunk. So he has this really luxurious life. He's pampered all the time because he's revered by his people, but he doesn't consider himself a god. So he is a god, he's considered a god by his people, but he doesn't think he's a god. This actually ends up being really funny because Light Song is basically questioning the faith that he is supposed to be a god for. He's always getting in arguments with the priests. He's always kind of making a joke of everything. He kind of makes a fool of himself all the time. And so nobody necessarily takes him seriously, except for they do because he's supposed to be a god. And then there's the god king himself, who is sort of like the people that come back because of glorious deaths, except for that he is supposed to be way, way more powerful than any of the rest of them. Nobody really knows much of anything about the God King. He is just considered the most holy of beings. He doesn't hardly ever make appearances. He hardly speaks. And Vivenna and Siri, who sort of are told about him, all they've heard is that they should fear him and that if they do anything to displease him or if they even talk to him, he will kill them. So. There's a lot of mystery surrounding this character, but all of the priests who help take care of all of these immortal beings, they may or may not know something more about the God King. It's kind of a mystery about who he is. Is he really this 
being this person that everybody says he is? Does he even really have that much power? So there's a lot of questions that you're like, wait, oh, what's going on with this guy that you want to learn about as you read the book, which I think makes the book feel so fast paced. As far as the last character that was mentioned in the very first paragraph, it says an immortal trying to undo the mistakes he made. I'm not going to say who that character is because I'm actually honestly a little surprised that the back of the book even referred to him that way because it's a little bit of a spoiler. All you really need to know about this character is that they're awesome. We do see magic used the most often by this person. Like I said, it's called biochromatic magic and its essence is breath. Every human being has a breath when they're born. They can give up their breath to another person and breath is what you use to, you can make things come to life. You can kind of use breath to command inanimate objects to do things breath, the more you have of it, the more colors are amplified. The God King, along with any other lesser immortal being like Light Song, actually need somebody else's breath to be given to them at least once a week or they'll die. You don't die if you give up your breath, so the people that give their breaths to Light Song and the God King are still alive, but they're considered drabs. Their, their senses are dulled. They don't have necessarily the same kind of presence. People can't really sense them like they do other individuals who do have breath, but Vivenna and Ciri come from a kingdom where they believe your breath is your soul. So they believe this other kingdom in Helendrin that they're a bunch of heathens because they give up their breaths weekly in order to let these godlike beings survive. It's third person point of view, but Sanderson always does a great job of anytime you're in any given character's perspective, you always feel like you're experiencing things the way they experience things. And because so much of the book is from Vivenna and Ciri's point of view, you get to organically figure out what's going on with Halandrin the way they do. One thing that this book doesn't really have a lot of is action. For me, that wasn't a big deal whatsoever. I don't think that the story needed a ton of action. There are some scenes with some fighting. There are some scenes where the magic is used and it's really cool. But I know for some people, they might expect that, especially if you're a Sanderson fan of Mistborn and Stormlight, there's some good action in those, and there's not really a ton of that in this. Something this book did have a lot of, though, was humor. I'd say Light Song especially. Anytime it's from Light Song's perspective, you're going to get some pretty good lines, you're gonna get some pretty funny moments, but beyond Light Song, the whole one of the princesses having to bear a child for the God King, that could be very awkward and very dark, but it actually, uh, <laughs> without giving away any spoilers, it actually turns into some pretty hilarious moments, not I don't know how to talk about it without it sounding like, wait, that sounds so morbid, how can that be funny? But it's not what you think. The pacing of this book I also thought was great. Not only did the humor make it somewhat lighter and more fun to read, but the mis the mystery part of it is like, wait, I wanna know what the heck is happening. So you always kinda wanna keep going. If I had to pick on anything in this book, it would be something very, very small and it's a writing thing. And that would be anytime there are descriptions of characters' reactions, Sometimes the same ones got used pretty often. So, you know, somebody raising their brow, I'd say that one was so often that even I would start to notice it. And I'm not usually that picky when it comes to that kind of stuff because, you know, there's only so many expressions people can have. And if you give like a really cheesy, unique one, it ends up feeling ridiculous. So, you know, people are gonna grit their teeth and raise their eyebrows and nostrils flare, whatever, that's gonna happen. But in this one, I think there was one time where like the same exact one was used two times in a row or something and I was like eh. Anyway though that's it for my review of Warbreaker. I really really enjoyed this book. It is absolutely one of my new favorite books. I think it's so well done and I'm a big sucker for character growth, character development, and political intrigue. So if you guys are as well, definitely check this book out. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the little bell icon to get notified when I post new videos and check out some more of my videos right over here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.